Welcome back Classic Gamers and thanks for viewing Jay the Classic Gamers Let's Play Shadowgate for the NES. When I first thought of making this video, I was going to attempt to break the world record. Until I looked it up on TwinGalaxies.com and it was 14 minutes and 23 seconds. Damn that's fast. So I figured that I wasn't going for the world record after all. But that I'll do the best that I can. So let's get started and I hope you enjoy Shadowgate. The story of the game is simple. The dreaded warlock lord is trying to summon the behemoth that will destroy all mankind. You are the last of the line of kings and the only one who can stop the dreaded warlock lord from summoning the behemoth and save the world. So we start off at the front door to the castle shadow gate. You need to open the door and open the skull above the door and take key number one and then enter the door. In this room, the dreaded warlock lord taunts you and calls you a buffoon. Ignore this prick, and take the two torches and use key number one on the middle door and enter that door. In this hallway, you need to open the secret passage and open the book. Don't take the book or else you'll die. Take key number two from inside the book and make sure you take these torches, one of them is a special torch, and go back to the previous room. Once you're back here, use key number two on the door to the right and enter that door. Take the sling and sword. Now go back to the secret passage and enter. In this room you need to take the arrow on the wall and use the torch on the left to open a secret door. Enter that door. In this room there's two bridges. Take the bridge on the left. In this room a wraith stands before you. Use your lit torch on the special torch to destroy the wraith. And take the torches and the cloak. Open the left door and enter that door. In this room, look at the Epor sign twice to learn the magic spell Epor. Then take bottle number two and the torch, and use your new magic spell Epor to make the rope climb up through the hole in the ceiling so you can climb up. In this room, you see three mirrors. Ignore them for now. Take the two torches and the broom. You never know when you're going to need a broom. Open the door behind you and enter. In this room you see a bunch of coffins. Open the door behind you and the lower right coffin to reveal a mummy. Use your lit torch to burn the mummy and take the scepter. Then enter the door behind you. In this hallway you see three doors. Open the door on the left and the right, and enter the door on the right. In this cavern you'll see a skeleton holding a key and a shark in the water. Ignore them for now and open the door and enter. In the next cavern you see a waterfall. Take a stone on the ground and use it on your sling, then move behind a waterfall. Now that you're behind the waterfall, hit the rock as hard as you can to reveal a bag. 
open the bag and take the three gems inside. Now head back to the hallway. When you hear that music, it means your torch is burning out, and if your torch burns out, it's game over. So it's time to light up a new one. We're back at the hallway. Take the door to the left this time. In this room you need to use the white gem in the socket on the wall to reveal the sphere. Take the two torches in the sphere and open the door and enter. In this room you only need to take three items, the shield, the hammer, and the spear. Make sure you pick up the shield first or you will die. Then head back to the cavern with the skeleton and the shark in it. Once you're back here, use the sphere on the water, then use your lit torch on the ice. Then take the sphere in key number three and head back to the room with the three mirrors in it. I forgot to do this earlier, but make sure you use the cloak on yourself, because if you enter a certain room, you will die if you're not wearing it. Once you're back here, use the hammer on the middle mirror, then use key number three to open the door, and enter. This is the room where you die if you're not wearing the cloak, but since we have it equipped, just use the spear on the flames, open the door, and enter. In this cavern you see a bridge, then a nasty troll appears demanding a gold coin, but since we don't have any gold coins, I wonder if he'll take a spear to the head instead. I guess so. Now enter the next room. In this room you see Amino Cyclops ready for battle. Use your sling with the stone in it and knock him out. Then use your sword on him to finish him off for good. Then use the crank on the well to reveal a bucket. Open the door and open the bucket and take the gauntlet and enter the next room. In this hallway you see three doors. I'm going to go ahead and use the gauntlet on myself, you'll have to do it eventually anyway, and then enter the first door on the left. This room is the study. The first thing you want to do is open the desk drawer. Then open scroll number three to learn the spell Tarak. Open scroll number four to learn the spell Illumina. Take the glasses and take key number five. Then use the glasses on yourself and open the book to learn the spore spell Mortera. Now take the map and the skull. You never know if you'll need them. Then use the red gem in the socket on the wall to find a secret door and enter.
When you enter this room, use the spell to rack, to crack open the globe. Then open the globe and take key number 6. And also take the bellow on the wall, and you never know if you'll need it. Then head back to the hallway. Now that we're back in the hallway, take the second door on the left. In this room, use the handle on the floor to reveal some water. Take the water in the horseshoe, you never know if you need it, and go to the next room. This is the garden. You need to take the flute, but make sure you have the gauntlet on or you will die. Then use the flute to reveal a ring, and take the ring, and then head back to the hallway. Back in the hallway, open the door that's straight in front of you and enter. Now we're in the banquet hall. Use your lit torch and burn the rug. Take key number four and the mirror. You never know if you need it. Then use key number four on the middle door. Use key number six on the left door. Use key number five on the right door and enter the right door. In this room, a Spink stands before you. You have to answer his riddle before you can pass. The answer will be one of six items. The broom, the map, the skull, the horseshoe, the bellow, or the mirror. The answer to the question this time is the mirror, so use the mirror on the Spinx and go to the next room. Now we're in the observatory. Open the star map and take the star and the rod, and then go up the ladder to the next room. In this room you see a nice pretty lady chained up to the wall. Show her no mercy and use the arrow on her and kill her. Then take the blade and head back to the banquet hall. Back in the banquet hall, take the middle door this time. In this hallway you see two doors. Take the door on the left. Now we're on the balcony. Use the rod on the hoe to reveal the wand. Take the wand and move to the left on the balcony. Here you want to open the bag on the left and take the big coin and one gold coin and head back to the banquet hall. We're back at the banquet hall. Now we want to take the door to the left. In this room, try to take the horn. Then an ugly hellhound will appear. Use the holy water to destroy him and take the horn, then climb up the ladder. On this balcony, you are confronted by an evil wyvern. Use the star on him to destroy him and then take the talisman and head all the way back to the cavern that has the two bridges.
Now that we're back here, use bottle number two on yourself and take the right bridge. Now we're confronted by a terrible snake. Just use the wand on him and he'll turn into a staff. Take the staff and head back to the Eper room. In the Eper room, open the hidden door on the far back wall and enter. In this room, use the blue gem in the socket on the floor. A wizard will appear and give you a scroll. Open the scroll to learn the spell Humana, then head back to the banquet hall. Oh no, this guy again? I don't have the spear anymore, so just use the spell Humana to get past him. Back at the banquet hall, go through the middle door. In this hallway, go through the door on the right. In this room, you see a skeleton with a crown on its head. Use the scepter on the skeleton's hand and a ring slot will appear. Use the ring in the ring slot and enter the next room. In this hallway, just go straight to the next room. In this cavern, you see two gargoyles. Use the spell Illumina to blind them and go to the room to the right. In this room, use the spell Motera to reveal a door and enter that door. In this cavern, use the switch box on the right. Move the right switch down, move the middle switch down, and then move the right switch back up to reveal the orb. Take the orb and head back to the gargoyle room. Back at the gargoyle room, take the door to the left. In this room you will see a huge well. Use the crank to open the well, then use the big coin in the well, and enter the well. Looks like we're at some sort of river or lake. Use the mallet on the gong to make the ferryman appear. Use the gold coin on the ferryman and move on his raft. We're getting close to the dreaded warlock lord. Use the talisman on the left socket and then use the horn and enter the skull door.
Now we finally come face to face with the dreaded warlock lord and the behemoth. Use the blade on the staff, use the orb on the staff, and use the staff on the behemoth to destroy him. And when the behemoth's about to die, he takes the dreaded warlock lord with him. And you save the world from total annihilation. It wasn't a world record, but I did beat the game in under 20 minutes, which is pretty good. And that would be good for fourth place. I really don't see where I could shave off five minutes in this game. It's a very hard game when you're trying to move as fast as you can. So this concludes Jay the Classic Gamer's Let's Play Shadowgate for the NES. I hope you've enjoyed. I want to thank you again for watching, and thanks again for the support.